Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, welcome back to my shop. Um, I had a couple of requests from my very last uh, video on the uh, the final build of the SIS port that kind of wanted or was asking me to go over this uh, vacuum clamping system and also my little mini sustainer storage that I have back there, which I kind of always just skip over because I forget about it. So this is just going to be a real quick video over these two things. And also at the end, uh, I got a discount code to give you guys for a change. So uh, stay tuned. But anyway, so this is my uh, Festool Vaxis. Um, it's kind of one of those tools where you don't really need to have it. Um, but once you do have it, you find a ton of uses for it and you kind of realize, God, how do I ever do anything without it? So it's not a necessity by any means. It's more of a luxury to have. As far as going over it, it, it literally is just a, it's just a vacuum clamp uh, is all it is. But it's got, you can get multiple heads for it and those come out and you can, you know, obviously interchange them. And this is probably the head that I use the most. Uh, it fits a lot of my material that I use for dominoing and sanding. But, you know, the Festool World is all millimeters. So this is uh, 50 mil by, I think, 275. Yep. 50 mil by 275. This is the head that I use the most. Um, and then this one I use a lot too when I'm doing like cabinet drawers because it's got the biggest surface area and you can put a big panel on this thing. And it's it's about 210 millimeters across. So this particular head's again, really good for like large panels, doors, cabinet doors, two by 10, one by 10 material. It's just got a lot of clamping force. And I know somebody might ask, well, how strong is it? Well, I don't know, but I can tell you once I get a piece of, once I get my material on one of these clamps, I cannot get it off <laughs> without releasing the pressure. I don't know what the actual clamping force is. It's a lot. You're not going to, it's going to be more than you'll ever need unless you're going to swing from it. I don't know, but it's more than enough. I can promise you. And <clears throat> here's just, here's the smallest little, little clamping head that I have. I don't use this a whole lot. Typically, if my material is this small, it's easier just for me to put on the MFT and either handhold it and domino it or put it on some uh, those rubber biscuits and sand it. I don't usually typically need th this small of a clamping pad. It's good to have in the event you do need it. Um, and they do make another even smaller one that you can use for, actually, for round material. It's got kind of a V-shaped profile to it, so you can put dowels in it. I don't have that one because I would never use it, and these things are, you know, around a hundred bucks a piece. So I don't have any need for that. But again, these all just slide into this to this contraption here, and they lock in. There is a a channel on the end of these, and there's a pin right here that locks into this groove. So when you when you put it in, you know, you can you can turn it, but you, to lock it in, you just flip this this locking pin. And this thing's in there now. Now the actual unit itself, it can twist. So you can put your material here and you can twist it around. You can tilt it. So loosen this knob on the side and you can then tilt your material this way. Which is, you know, you can you can put your, your, your material essentially in any orientation that you'll need. I'll turn it on in just a second to kind of show you, but it's loud. So... I'm just trying to get this over with right now. So I'll lock this down. Um, the way that I have this set up though for me, I've got my compressor set up underneath my FAR MFT. I drilled some holes to run the, the air lines through the back and I have them coming up through here. So I, they're just out of the way. Um, I didn't want a bunch of hoses laying around. So my compressor's all the way down there plugged into an outlet in the back of the wall airlines are coming through here and then I'm attaching the airlines obviously to the unit itself and I attached the compressor to a Bluetooth remote so the remote to turn this Vaxis on is right here so I can so I can turn it on and off simply right here I don't have to because the, the on off buttons on the compressor so it doesn't really make much sense if I have it hiding behind my MFT I can't get to it so that's why I have it connected to a Bluetooth remote. Um, and one thing that I did build, I'll try to take this out. 
as good as I can. The, the airlines are kind of tight. So, and this thing's not light. So I don't know if you guys can see this little contraption, but Festool makes, I guess, an aluminum version that you can connect to your MFT, and it's, I think, like 200 250 bucks, probably more than that. But I found this. I was watching a Festool Live episode with Sedge, and he referenced the Contouro. They have a, a drawing on the Contouro uh, owner's manual of how to build this for the Vaxis, which I thought was really weird. I don't know why they would do that and not actually put this in this manual, but they don't, whatever. I'll put a picture of this. I can't find the link to send you guys, but I'll put a, pic I'll put a picture of this and you can, you'll be able to see the dimensions, but it gives you the exact dimensions of, of how far in and how far down to put your holes for your, uh, your key bolts. And you just gotta make a couple of L brackets. I just use solid oak. And this thing just slides in here now. And it's at the perfect height to where if I put a piece of material here, it doesn't interfere, interfere with my MFT table. Um, but let me turn it on and I'll kind of show you guys how it works. So, so there's like an apparatus here in the center. When you push down on it, that's what creates the suction. So when you put your material down, it, it sucks down to it. Now, again, so you can move this thing in any orientation you want. You can loosen it up, turn it around, you know, tighten it down. Possibilities are really just up to you, however you want to put it. Um, and then to release pressure, it comes with a foot pedal. I didn't want it on the floor, so I ran my foot pedal from the machine underneath my MFT, and I have it attached here. So I can release the pressure comes off so my foot pedal is really a hand pedal for me I didn't want it I didn't want the foot pedal on the floor so that's where I keep that um, also on the back of this Vaxis it has suction there is a gasket on the back of this thing I don't think guys probably can't see it but there is a gasket here so what that means is that this whole system this whole clamping system actually sucks itself to a non-porous surface. So once I turn this on, I can't, you can't move it because you can, this dial right here actually creates suction to pull in this Vaxis to whatever it's sitting on. In this case, it's on its side and it holds it just fine. It's not going anywhere. So again, you know, it's a, uh, it's a luxury. You don't, you don't necessarily need it. Um, I don't use it as much as I thought that I would, but again, when I do use it, I absolutely love it. Um, but it, you know, it makes workflow a little bit faster, especially if you're if you're using it for a lot of dominoes. Um, you can just slap your work pieces down, knock them through. It, it just it, it makes it a lot faster than clamping it each piece of material that you're dominoing, clamping it to the MFT or work table, whatever. This is just a lot faster. But uh, again, you don't have to have it, but it, it's nice to have. But um, so that's really it for the Vaxis. I know that's not an in-depth review and it wasn't meant to be, but hopefully it helped out the few comments that wanted me to go over how I have mine set up at the MFT. So there's that. So let's go look at the little mini uh, sustainer storage. Okay, so this is the little uh, grid cabinet thing that I built just to store all of my mini sustainers. Um, these are not on slides, they're not on rails. There's not even a back to this thing. Um, but these sustainers are so small, you can pull them out just by the T-handle. Um, and that's how I have this set up. So, you know, I just measured just enough width to get these to slide in and not have a whole lot of wiggle room. There's a little bit of play, but not too much. Um, and it's just made out of MDF. You know, nothing, just a bunch of scrap MDF that I had. But, you know, it works out pretty well. And this, I just keep all of my kind of odds and ends, small things in all of these sustainers. So... Uh, you know, like in this box, I have all of my Allen keys, or most of them at least. Um, you know, here's a box of all my markers, pencils, permanent markers. Um, got a box of all of my super glue and epoxy. I keep it all in there. Uh, and then the heaviest one I've got. 
is all of my brad. So this box probably weighs 30 pounds, but it's just all of my uh, my 18 and 23 gauge brads and pins that I keep in there. Uh, let's see, what else do I got? Got a little sustainer full of uh, X-Acto knives and vinyl. I do I do some vinyl uh, wrapping. So this, this little box has all of my vinyl tools, my X-Acto knives, my blades, my scrapers. So I keep that in this smaller one. Uh, just a bunch of kind of odds and ends knickknacks that, that kind of just would have gotten thrown into a drawer. I put them in a small sustainer and label it. And, you know, I'm thinking about actually taking this top off and building one more layer, but I don't have any more small sustainers, so I, and I really probably don't need any more. But that's all it is. It's just a, just a simple you know, grid work pattern cabinet that I built, and these just slide in and out. And you can grab them by the T-lock and pull them out. They're not that, that heavy. So that's that. Um, and then finally, guys, uh, the video that I did a couple days ago um, on the Kaizen foam, inserts from kaizeninserts.com they reached out to me and wanted me to offer you guys a discount so for the first 100 people that go to kaizeninserts.com we'll get 10 percent off their order i'll put the the coupon code in the description um but again it's good for 10 percent off your entire order and it's good for the first 100 people that use it so i wanted to give you guys an option if you wanted to go you know try kaizen you know, give it a shot. It's ten percent off, and, and they're not that expensive to begin with. So, uh, you guys, give you know, give give them a try. There's a lot of things. Even if you don't have Festool, uh, they do it for Dewalt, Milwaukee, Fine, Makita. Uh, they have a bunch of, of specialized inserts for pretty much any kind of st tool storage containers that we might have. So, um, anyway, guys, with that, not, not not a crazy video. I really just wanted to give you that discount code and, and go you know help out a few people that, that gave me some comments on my Vaxis in this little mini sustainer wall. So uh, we will see you guys coming up here pretty soon. Thanks.